Earlier this year, I worked with the National Air and Space Museum on a special build to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 mission. We called it Project Egress, and it was a life-sized replica of the Apollo 11 command module hatch, or door. Using 3D scan data and original technical drawings from the Air and Space Museum's archives, an incredible engineering student named Andrew Barth modeled every single intricate mechanical component of the hatch using Fusion 360. That detailed digital model of the hatch was then separated into individual mechanical components, which Jen Schachter, the project manager of this entire process, sent out to more than 40 different makers all over the world. Each of them replicated the piece in their preferred medium, and I assembled it with an incredible group of makers live on the floor of the Air and Space Museum on July 18th. Here's how the build went. Okay, it is game day. I am in the Moving Beyond Earth Gallery at the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum. They have generously donated this space to us today to do this build, and we're ready. All of our helpers are in place, all 45 boxes from all the contributors, including a giant crate from Microsoft, uh, are here. They've made it through the mails, and in about 10 minutes, we're gonna start building a command module hatch, and hopefully, in about eight hours, you'll be seeing a piece to camera from me, very grateful, maybe a little sweaty, uh, and satisfied with our results. Oh, that's fine. And the, uh, all latches, all oh, all static great. So okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Hey, these two look like the holes line up. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely how it works. Back to back. And they made like people made these beautiful cases and enclosures for them. So I think one of the next things we're going to do is pull the Microsoft base and door frame out of their crate. That's the biggest part. That's the anchor of this thing. But still, there's lots of packages to look inside. Oh, fair, fair. Oh, wow, so none of these have, this is, hasn't been assembled. That Each one, one is just... Okay, so we'll, so we'll put that one together. 29. And it's, there's some aluminum and there's some 3D printing. That's amazing. This is from uh, Intermediate uh, Educational Campus at Waynesburg. So right now we're unboxing all of the parts and labeling each of them with their part ID number so that we can locate them in the total assembly. Bottom middle bell crank, which is... That's this one or that one? That one. This one. We're, we're certain it's the middle, right? Baker Ripley Fab Lab, which is part number 12. Look at that! Oh, and there's an NFC tag in here, which if you hold your phone up to it, points to the project page on the Smithsonian website, so it'll permanently be tied to the project. Sophie Wong, amazing. Thanks. Apparently this part was sent to a uh, 100,000 feet elevation before it was sent to us. No more snacks on the floor. Oh! <laughs> A level of specificity that is truly magnificent. Wow. Oh my goodness. This is like unboxing an Apple product. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, there's more than one. That's beautiful. That's gorgeous. Oh my god, with actual ball. Oh. That's fantastic. And then... What is this? Oh, they're slides. It is, and slides of them making this? That's amazing. Oh, wow, yeah. And they're all... Oh, with all of their images. I gotta put this back. <laughs> that is incredible. Oh my god, it's beautiful. This is uh, one of the hinges made by Jimmy DeResta. Hardwood and brass. I mean, the degree to which every single contributor deeply engaged with these parts and then put their own stamp on it is super inspiring. And seriously, unwrapping these boxes is like the greatest Christmas ever. Oh, this is Ryan Nagata's. Dude. Classic Ryan Nagata. 
the stamps are all correct and even they're even a little bit crappy like slightly not quite perfect he went to visit the real hatch and took extensive close-up pictures because he knew at some point he would be making a replica of it <laughs> <laughs> is it is it like MDF? Yeah, it's a, it's a machined, it's a CNC machined MDF. Ah. It's like birthing an urukai or something. <laughs> <laughs> Layers of film. <laughs> yep. Oh, it's so beautiful. Oh. So right now they're unpacking the main hatch frame. This is what all the pieces of hardware are going to attach to. And it's really exciting to see it in person. We've seen pictures and it's absolutely beautiful. Okay, I'm out. Ah! Good. This is so exciting. <laughs> From that cardboard model in the game. <laughs> We, we literally assembled one of these out of Amazon boxes I know, just to look at it. Yeah, we all got a big plastic picture. That's that? Oh. Yes. Wow, I might have actually gotten it. Yeah. I didn't expect to get that right. <laughs> no bubbles or anything? Nope. One. <laughs> okay, maybe one. Here's a question. How do you align a hole that you can't see? With my flashlight pointed through there. Oh. Genius. Yeah. Beauty. Should I take this off so it doesn't have to get Oh, yeah, by all means. Uh, yeah. Movement! Ooh. Oh! Yay! <laughs> awesome. Nice. We have our first uh, engineering problem, which is it's too close tolerance. We expected this. We've got a part that's maybe 15 thou oversized, so just trying to widen the hole a little bit. to come over and watch us build all the time. That was lovely. <laughs> come right, welcome to Oddly Satisfying. Oh, 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 yep. <laughs> oh yeah. no. Yeah, yeah, just a little bit. Oh. Just a little bit. It's fine. It seemed easy. <laughs> That's it. Awesome. Yes. Here, I'm going to fix that right now. <laughs> I'm assembling the outer handle right now, which is multiple pieces that slot together. Andrew's over there working on the gearbox, uh, which is a pretty massive assembly. It's going to take him a little while. And Adam's over here putting the window onto the inside of the hatch. So uh, when you cast things, they can tend to shrink. And when Ryan got to cast this beautiful window shroud, uh, it shrunk about 10%, which meant <laughs> that only 10% of the holes still line up. So. I was able to get about eight screws across the top. The rest I had to use very high bond double stick. Uh, and then I am literally gluing in sliced off screw heads to complete the look. 
At this point, yeah. it's whatever works. Yeah. How's it going, Jen? Ah, uh, it's going. I think I can I can uh, bolt on the outer window frame. I have one stubborn bolt that won't go through on the outer handle that maybe you could work some magic on. Sure, I totally will. Say Tom's piece, the jack screws. And the bell cranks. Okay. Those are So, yeah. Um. <laughs> A couple of these parts are built literally so that they could probably go on the actual door and this is one of them. This is the most beautiful. Look at that. Oh my God. What a masterpiece. I think, we'll, I mean, we still have like two, at least two hours, three, I think technically. So we're, we'll be, I think yeah. we'll be good. We, we wanna, yeah, we want to hustle. <laughs> I know, right? Don't watch me. At this point, when one lines up perfectly, I'm like, oh, thank you. Right? <laughs> so we're a little nervous about time, and because of that, we pulled in lots of makers that are here that actually made pieces to help us build this thing on stage. So right now, Kate and Stephanie and Sophie and Mel are all helping us to find all the hardware for each piece and then map out where it goes onto the door. And we're gonna begin attaching it all as soon as that's ready. We've got the window in both sides. We are working on all the linkages. There's a whole bunch of linkages, linkages all the way around the outside perimeter that are very self-similar, but they're all slightly different. So uh, there's a team working on that. I've just gotten Jimmy DeResta's hinges mostly mounted. I have a little bit more solidifying to do of this one, but that'll happen later in the day. Uh, and this beautiful part is in and fits. So it feels like we're going good but I am not feeling optimistic just yet. I'm not allowing that. Uh, all right. So yeah, so they're all, and the hardware's all ready to go, so we can just hand them to you one by one, and you just boop, boop, boop. Let's start doing it. Okay, awesome. So it should be, thank you, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is our piece. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, right, Andrew, they always face outward because the linkages are around the perimeter. So then I guess right now... Now I'm uh, feeling pretty let me, optimistic. Let me confirm. Okay. We've got uh, 75, 80% of our uh, outside linkages uh, installed and it's exceeding my expectations. It is a calico exquisite corpse of a collaborative construction. Uh, and it looks, like, it looks like we're gonna finish on time. Again, I'm holding off my full optimism for a minute, but you know we're all gonna write our little names inside of one of these at, some, at the end. That would be awesome. And totally. we should, so many of the builders are here and you students. All of them. Yeah. Just really little places all the way around. So yeah, that's, that's good to know. <laughs> Great. And then it has the alignment on that. Awesome. It lines up. Awesome. Yeah, so we can start, we can start putting them on. The actual mechanical function of thing, which we'll go over in a little bit, is kind of mind-blowing. Um, but really, 90% of the parts are on, and the screws are all fitting, so feeling really good. Nice. All right. Uh, if we push this out. I'm there safe. we go. Okay. Yeah. Just forced my way past it. That, and we, that's fine. Did we strip the screw Good out? enough. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. And then Stephanie, 26. Here we go. there we go. <laughs> <laughs> you were ready. Send me in, coach. Fabulous. 
I'm sorry. We are like th two or three linkages away from being done. And frankly, I think we're all a little surprised <laughs> how well it's gone. Despite a bunch of uh, difficulty in alignment, which is totally to be expected when you have 45 different makerspaces building parts for a thing, to be honest, our fit and finish has been way better than it should have been for that kind of dispersed construction. And we're close to the end. This is the very best part. Oh, you're peeling off the... Oh. Oh, yeah. Oddly satisfying. Oh, yeah. Oh! oh. <laughs> like a pro. <laughs> All right, let's try that. I, I adjusted my eyeball. Right like that. Is that the last one? We hide that crime. It's done! Yeah! <laughs> um, Please give a huge round of applause to Jen Schachter, who shepherded this and was the mama bear for the whole thing. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Uh, a hand for all the makers present who contributed to this beautiful object. And then, Seriously, a hand for the Smithsonian for allowing a bunch of makers to come in and mess up the joint. And Andrew Barth took a scan from the Smithsonian of this hatch that was basically like a surface scan and somehow in his brain figured out how all these linkages worked and drew them all in like, I don't know, two months. A hand for Andrew. Absolutely. And then also a bunch of our extended tested family came to this, so please give a hand to them for helping us out. Ryan, Joey, Mel, Kate. Okay, now I'd like all the makers who contributed to come up on stage and sign their work, please, if you would. Uh, at Industrial Light and Magic, whenever we've built a large spaceship, which we stopped doing after episode one, Star Wars, but before that, we built lots of spaceships. And whenever you did, it was always with like seven to 20 people. And when you were finished with the spaceship, everyone signed in some discreet part. So I guarantee you on the five foot Millennium Falcon on display, there's 20 signatures hidden throughout the thing and on every other Star Wars ship. And this one's no different. It's part of a spaceship, 45 builders participated. We're all gonna sign a little signature here and I'm gonna give it the start. Right, here we go. Jen? There it is, 45 contributors. Uh, 10 helpers, eight hours, and one command module hatch that is, as we've been saying all along, a calico, exquisite corpse of a collaboration. And I could not be more blown away by how it came out. It exceeded all of my expectations, uh, including more parts fitting than I thought would fit together. Um, I find that I love making stuff in front of people. Like there's a very different kind of stakes to it and also an audience interaction. I've done a lot of stage stuff, but this is something wholly other. And the way the crowd gets involved with the build and the way the group of us putting the build together gets involved with the crowd's emotion, it's something really unique. Uh, as is this beautiful new piece and new member of the Smithsonian's incredible collection in this palace of stories.